And now the latest across the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for October the 8th. Well, this evening we have one system on the main map tonight, that being Tropical Storm Lion Rock, which has formed today in the South China Sea. The map overall looks quiet, but it is deceiving, as we have several invests that are likely to form across the world tonight. It's day 281 of 2021, we've had 78 storms form, that number is likely to surpass 80 as we end the week and go into this weekend and maybe even into next week. In the Atlantic Basin on day 130 of hurricane season, 92 l is not one of those invests that's likely to form. A 30% chance on this one as it generally tracks along the Carolina coastline. If this were to form, it was not, it's not going to be a hurricane. Uh, it's going to be a weak tropical storm that doesn't last too long. In the Eastern Pacific on day 145 of hurricane season, it's a different story with our current area of interest. 80% chance on this one and models have been depicting for a while now that this could become a significant hurricane and potentially bring impacts to Mexico. So we'll have to keep an eye on this one very closely and we'll have to do the same for many of our invests in the Western Pacific. 93 and 94W are looking to merge. We don't know exactly which one is going to form out of these two, but one of these is likely going to form and could be a significant system for uh, potentially the Philippines, uh, Taiwan, and, so and the southern Japanese islands as it generally tracks overall northwestwards, and 95W is likely to form as it generally tracks northwestwards as well. In the Indian Ocean, northern side here, nothing really here at all that we're watching. I'm, I'm sure none of us are complaining about that. In the southern hemisphere, the southwest Indian Ocean still has that invest that used to be 91S, but now it's 92S. Uh, low chance on this one, uh, as it generally tracks westwards, still the potential for an early season storm here. In the satellite imagery world of the Atlantic Basin, we can see the thunderstorm activity is displaced due to some wind shear uh, with uh, 92L. And if you look towards the Central America region, you can see the thunderstorm activity that is our Eastern Pacific AOI, which is a tropical wave which you might be able to see it here on visible before the sun goes down in the eastern pacific that again could become a significant storm models have been depicting this for a while now and i, I definitely watch this system if you are along the coast of mexico very closely uh, we'll, we'll still you know figure out the fine tunings of this forecast but at this time i wouldn't be surprised if the system becomes a hurricane minimum with the environmental conditions and sea surface temperatures that the models are depicting in the south china sea you can see uh, lion rock there it's pretty large influence there it looks like just from the cloud cover and in the main western pacific philippine sea you can see 93 and 94w and the general anti-cyclonic flow around them those are going to merge again, and we don't know which one is going to form, but it's likely that at least one of them will form. And 95W is off to its east. That one uh, likely to form again as it tracks generally northwestwards. In the Indian Ocean, we have general monsoonal activity here. Nothing signifying tropical cyclone formation. With 92S in the South Indian, Indian Ocean, uh, we have some good thunderstorm activity, and we don't know what it's looking like underneath that completely. We'd have to wait on an ASCAT pass. That would really determine if we went higher with formation chances or lower. But nonetheless, the chance of a early season storm here is still there with 92S. The sea surface temperatures for our uh, area of interest in Eastern Pacific, as I just mentioned, very warm. They've been piping hot all year long. Uh, and with the, again, with the way the models are depicting the environmental conditions, low shear, uh, moist environments, I wouldn't be surprised to see this become a hurricane minimum. In the Atlantic, where 92L is, it's got the uh, Gulf Stream, which is plenty warm for tropical cyclone formation. And again, you know, the conditions could get a bit better this weekend, but I wouldn't expect this to become a significant storm. Where 92S is, it's generally 25 to 26 degrees Celsius, not the most favorable there. It's the opposite in the Western Pacific for all of our invests and storms. High sea surface temperatures with high oceanic heat content. It's ready for significant storms to form. And unfortunately, that potential does exist with our current areas of interest there. Let's hope they don't become too strong or significant. In the 
sea surface temperature anomalies, we can clearly see that much of the world is above average here. Uh, going from the eastern uh, Pacific to the Atlantic to the western Pacific to the Indian Ocean, we're generally above average, even in some of the basins to where we're getting closer to our cyclone seasons, such as Australia or the South Pacific. Generally above average, the only big below average areas you see is in the Gulf of Alaska and near the equatorial regions and in the Central Pacific. So, um, generally above average and where our systems are, where much of our systems are, above average sea surface temperatures, which is only contributing to much of the formation that we're seeing, especially in the Pacific Ocean. In the On This Day segment, we have a significant storm here on our map in the Atlantic Basin. On this day in 2001, Hurricane Iris was approaching Belize. It rapidly intensified on this day from a Category 1 to a Category 4 and would make landfall on the 9th as a 125 knot, 145 mile per hour Category 4 hurricane in Belize. Jerry was right behind it, but thankfully did not become too significant. It brought some impacts to the leeward, uh, Windward Islands, sorry. Didn't make it too far into the Caribbean though. And Typhoon Croso was moving northeastwards, east of Japan. Again, this segment is provided by our Cyclone History page on Twitter. I recommend, I highly recommend that you follow that page on Twitter. Moving to the naming lists tonight, we have the potential that the Atlantic finishes off its naming list. The next two names here are Wanda followed by Adria. In the Eastern Pacific, the next two names are Pamela followed by Rick. Pamela looks to be not too far away. In the Central Pacific, a common question with Tootsie Pops is how many licks does it take to get to the center? But we may know that answer before Hone forms as, I'm going to be honest, I don't think it's going to form. I don't think we're going to get lucky this season. We'll probably have to wait until 2022. The question will always remain, where are you, Hone? In the Western Pacific, we're looking out for potential systems here with our invest two systems here. We're not expecting three, thankfully. The next two names are Kampazu followed by Nam Namthun. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that name. In the North Indian Ocean, the next two names are Jawad followed by Asanai. As and in the South Indian Ocean, or sorry, the well, the South Indian Ocean, yes, we are looking out for potential formation here. The next two names are Ana followed by Batsarai. In the Australian region, we kind of went off order there. The next two names are Patty followed by Ruby. And in the South Pacific, we're looking out for Cody followed by Dovey. Thank you so much for watching this Tropical Weather Bulletin, and we'll have another one tomorrow night.